Wait a second. These mice still exist in 2021? Perhaps that was a little bit too much for this particular product, but in our bubble search for the best performing, the best lightweight gaming mice, I thought it'd be really cool to take a look at this bizarre, really weird gaming mouse from back in the day, although it's still sold today as like something modern. But to be honest with you, I used to associate these type of mice as like the cool gaming mice on the market, right? So back when the original rat came out, oh my God, I love that concept and the design, but does it apply to 2021. In many ways, this generic PG6 from Amazon at $25 has helped the industry move in the exact opposite direction from these types of designs. After using this mouse for a couple days, I'm so happy that it's not the current norm for professional esports mice, but also I feel like we could take away some things or concepts from this PG6 and apply it to the current gaming mice space to improve it. You have a 1200 watt power supply in there. Yep. And the triple slot RTX 3090. Sure, it will fit if you find one. And the 240 millimeter radiator. This, my friends, is the new Sugo 14 and 15 from Silverstone. The microwave, <clears throat> the ITX case you need for a no compromise build under 20 liters. Check it out below. All right, so first of all, I legitimately think this mouse looks kind of cool and let me know if you agree. Perhaps it's a bit nostalgic of me since this used to be popular. Like the metal shell reminds me of the M65 from Corsair that had that aluminum shell. And that one element was a cool selling point at the time. All the design elements on the PG6 make it look like it's made for cyborgs. And to be honest, this might pass as like your game specific colorway, just like the cyberpunk edition of the Razer Viper Ultimate. If there was a way to implement this plating style design into current gaming mice without compromising the weight or the shape or the comfort, I'll be all for it. I mean, it still looks very different from all the main performance kings and it's much heavier too at 104 grams on my scale. So twice as heavy as my main mouse, the M720, but it's also kind of funny how there are three different weight specs on the product sheet, all of which are wrong and all of which are much heavier than the actual product. But this is a really interesting reminder how our thinking has changed over time about the weight of the mouse. You know, we used to add weights to the mouse and that was a cool feature. Now we are removing the weight but uh, I feel like there's no happy medium anymore. The other main thing this mouse has going for it is the adjustable back, something I wish was available on more mice, just like on the new Extrify M42. The mechanism on the PG6 is obviously outdated with the thumb screw at the back that adds weight and might not actually hold the shape properly over time, but the idea is fantastic, letting you change the shape or the length of the mouse depending on your hand size. I really want this concept of adjustable back to come back to mice in 2021, and it's why the concept of the rat mouse in theory was so awesome, but you know, it has kind of fallen off the competitive wagon because there are no lightweight options, which is what everyone craves these days. Also, it seems like the sides could extend too because of the visible spring mechanism and accessible torque screw, but it's all for show. Loosening the sides made no difference to the shape whatsoever. This is kind of unfortunate, but it's also $25 mouse. Let's not expect miracles here, okay? As for the shape, this is actually not bad. It's very flat design, would work very well for fingertip, claw, and my hybrid grip style. The comfort compromises are surprisingly many, however. Like these wing sections at the front of each trigger that bump into my ring finger, while while the thumb plate is unnecessary, you can clearly see it's just there for a show, but it's way too flat to the surface to be properly used and it's just an additional contact point between the mouse and the pad that adds friction. I'm happy we don't see these often, or the thumb area is properly curved to support the thumb. Also because of the fake spring mechanism on the sides, the browser buttons, especially the back one, is very low to comfortably reach. The perfect example of stupid design over comfort. There's also that triple click button in front of the thumb, which is way too far forward, requiring readjustment of your grip. Finally, we have a non-centered cable that isn't much of an issue with a bungee, but this uh, useless metal bracket has no functionality in the center, 
aside from maybe occasionally cleaning your nails or something. But doing a quick search on Amazon reveals many identical mice with the cable coming out of the center. So that piece is actually used as part of the frame, but Infic didn't use it for some reason. The surprising part here are the Huano optical switches that sound and feel awesome. But then there's a scroll wheel that has a lot of play within the housing. So what I appreciate about these products is that they highlight what used to be the norm and what used to be considered cool for the gaming space. But now actually it's quite uh, funny to see all these performance mice doing exactly the opposite of what the PG6 offers. So better sensors, better ergonomics, better glide, better cable and better overall comfort too. Of course, I had to use this in gaming and the PG6 gave me absolutely no confidence in sensor performance since its liftoff distance is really high so I can get full tracking without even touching my mouse mat and just hovering around with the mouse over the mouse mat. This means anytime I lift and place the mouse back down, I get these massive jitters on screen. I still was able to record somewhat precise gameplay, but it's nowhere near the performance you would get with literally anything else that's come out in the last three years or so. And so the point of this video has multiple parts. Number one is I would love for the shape customization to come back to the modern times, either with this implementation like we've seen with Extrify or the similar mechanism like on the PG6 with the thumb screw, but obviously refined to improve on the ergonomics and weight. For number two, I think I've taken for granted all these sensor, shape, buttons, feet, cable, software improvements that we've received over the last couple of years that really has defined what a good performance mouse should be today. And for number three, I feel like there's an opportunity in that $25 gaming mice budget space that instead of catering to our nostalgic days with these overly complex, weird gamery designs, I would love to see companies like Glorious, Razer, and the up and coming Pulsar with their X-Lite mice to compete in that budget territory just to push out all that existing garbage that exists on the market today. Because at its core, the PG6 is a total waste of $25. But that is not to say that all budget gaming mice are terrible. In 2018, we did the roundup with like really cheap mice under $20, and some of them were really good with fantastic sensors, great ergonomics. So if it looks overly complicated and gamery, it probably isn't for you. And if it has language like amazing breathing light effects give you the best enjoyment of gaming, you know not to expect a quality experience. And on that note, it made me really appreciate all the fantastic options that we have in the performance sector around the $50 price point that make everything underneath just feel obsolete. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Dmitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.